The book does a great job of going in-depth on visual aids. I'm going to provide an overview of what is expected during your speeches, the types of presentation tools that you could use, and I'm going to conclude with some tips. Presentation or visual aids are significantly more important to a quality speech than you may realize. They can enhance your credibility, they provide visual and audio tools for a diverse audience, and they can help us better understand a concept. The first type of visual aid that your textbook discusses are 3D visual aids. Three-dimensional three -dimensional visual aids include objects, models, or people. So, you know, real tangible things um, that are going to showcase um, a part of your speech. You might bring in a person, you might use some sort of object, you know, maybe if it's about sports, you might bring in some object that would be related to that sport, uh, or you're talking about something where a model, I have an airplane model in this, makes sense. Uh, maybe you're talking, I talk about Star Wars all the time, so maybe you're doing a speech on that and you had a Star Wars Lego kit and you brought in that as a model because it showcases a planet you're talking about or a specific type of ship. Two-dimensional visual aids are what the book discusses next, and this is typically the more common type of visual aid that I see in the classroom. Two-dimensional visual aids offer significantly more options for students, which I think is why. Um, something falling into this category probably makes the most sense for an informative speech um, and for the following speeches because it can be difficult to showcase a 3D object thoroughly in a classroom. Examples of the most common types of 2D visual aids that are used are PowerPoint or presentation slides. Every once in a while I get a student who would prefer to use another platform that is not PowerPoint to display a visual aid, which I am okay with. Also posters, photos, um, actual photos of an event um, or something that happened, maybe ones that you took or maybe you find some photos that you think would be a, would showcase your topic well. Again, just make sure that you are giving credit to whoever took those photos. You can also utilize graphs and charts, diagrams, maps, and video and audio. Slapping a PowerPoint or handout together is much more than doing just that. While well, I don't expect you to hire a designer to create the highest quality visual aid, you should take these design principles into consideration when putting something together. Not only is it important for your grade, but it's also important for your credibility. Think about the giggles you get when you see an awful PowerPoint. The design principles that are touched on in the book are simplicity, repetition, contrast, and spacing. And so simplicity, again, it's just keeping things simple. You don't want something to be convoluted and covered in text or images and all over the place. Simple is typically better and easier to read. Repetition is also important. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean writing the same word a million times, but what it means is um, when you're putting design pieces together, you want to repeat the same types of things you're already doing. Um, so as you can tell, these slides all have the same type of format to them. I'm just repeating what's already there. Um, and, that, and again, that design is also simple. Contrast. You want things to contrast one another so that they stand out. You want to be able to read things. You want things to, you want certain things to pop out. You might enhance that contrast of the colors. Um, you want to think about those things again as you put together a presentation or a handout. And then spacing, everything, every single component on your design has a purpose and a reason to be there. Um, you can tell if somebody doesn't know what they're doing th with information, if the spacing seems really off on top of all of these other things, um, and if things are just kind of wonky and don't seem like there's a flow and don't seem like they have a place. In this slide, we'll showcase, obviously, very dramatically what not following those design principles would look like. And, you know, there's things that the spacing is really wonky, um, there is some contrast, and the, there's not a lot of contrast um, in the, some of the text colors, and it makes it more difficult for people to read. There's different types of font. Again, you just want to repeat the same fonts. You know, when you look at a handout and there's like six different fonts on it, and you don't quite maybe know what's wrong right away, but then you realize it, and again, you kind of giggle in your head, because why did they need to use six different fonts when they had one good font? 
Um, and then I have a photo that's just obviously, again, it's not spaced well. It seems out of place. I didn't really know where to put it. Um, so I just slapped it on there. And while this is a really dramatic example of a bad visual aid, you have all seen these types of things happen. And you don't want to be the person who puts that sort of material together. So some visual aid tips that I'm going to give you. Some of these are from the book and then some of these are just from my professional experience. Know the room. Know what you're walking into, whether you're going to the presentation center or whether you're going to be utilizing a room at the library. Just know the room that you're working with so you understand what type of visual aid is going to work in there and what you can show. Um, and I always recommend that people go in, in to the room ahead of time if possible. That way you can make sure that everything is set up so that you don't have any missteps when you're trying to show your visual aid. Because I hate seeing somebody just kicking butt at their speech and then they have a visual aid mishap and that throws you off for a few seconds. It happens, it's okay, but obviously we all want to avoid those types of things. If you are going to utilize some sort of handout, you need to make sure that you have hands out, handouts for everyone. So if you're giving a speech um, in front of an audience of eight, or if you're signing up for the presentation center and you decide to bring some sort of handout to showcase as a visual aid, make sure that you've got enough for everybody because that would be the point of the handout and that is the power in the handout. Consider your timing. So you want to think about, you know, when is going to be a good time to showcase this visual aid. People can tell when you've just put something up there for the sake of checking a box on a rubric. So make sure that you're being thoughtful about when you show this and it connects to what you're trying to show, um, connects to an example, provides or better supporting evidence. You also want to consider your timing if you are going to be giving out a handout or if you're going to have students pass around some photos that you brought in um, or some sort of object. If you hand it out right at the beginning, um, a handout, students might focus on that and might not focus on your messaging. So you want to be thoughtful about when you give something out to an audience because you want them to focus on you and not on whatever they have in their hands. And then going along with that, put it away means if you do decide to bring something in, if you have a poster or an object um, or something like that and you're going to be showing it um, or a, a presentation slide, make sure that you put it away when it's finished because again, people will try to focus more on the presentation aid, the visual aid, then they will be focused on your message and you don't want them to have a reason to tune you out because you want them to listen to your message. And this goes moving forward when you're putting together presentations for other classes or for a workplace um, or just a social event. You also want to make sure you transition. So if you're using a visual aid, make sure that you transition into it and then transition out of it so that we know what to expect. It always feels really awkward when all of a sudden somebody is like, oh, photographs or, oh, here's a video. Make sure you, you know, work us up for it so we know what to expect. Audience like to have some sort of lead in and know what they're talking about. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just, again, providing one of those signpost words that I talk about um, in another lecture, using those words to transition in and out. Don't overdo the text. If you're putting together some sort of presentation slide or a poster or even a handout, don't overdo the text. You have all probably been in a classroom where a professor puts so much text. Even this feels like a lot of text to me right now on this slide. Um, so you don't want to be that person. You don't want to be um, reading off of your PowerPoints word for word all the time. Um, you know, sometimes it happens. Sometimes you use a little bit. But though visual aids aren't your note cards. Um, so make sure that you're not overdoing it, and I will also notice as well when I'm grading. If you decide to use your visual aid at the beginning or end as a conclusion or an attention getter, it needs to be good. <laughs> um, sometimes people like to do that because it really gets people excited about their speech. Um, they just have something that's very poignant and they want to showcase that at the beginning or end. I am not completely against that. I think sometimes they can be used really effectively at the beginning or end of a speech, but that is the key word, effectively. Um, make sure that you just didn't know what to do, um, so you decided to put together uh, or show us a video or um, some sort of audio presentation at the beginning or the end because you didn't know what to do. Um, usually, again, we can kind of notice that there's not a very effective transition. 
Um, and if it is something you're thinking about, I always do. If I can catch it in an outline early on, I do try to talk with you about it. And then video and audio should be no more than 15 or 20 seconds of your speech. Your speech should not be more video or audio than you talking. And this one can be really hard. This can be really challenging for students um, who want to incorporate video or audio into their speech. Um, but we can't, for the sake of the, for both the timing of the speech and it hit requirements and things like that, I cannot allow half of your speech to be video or audio and it will impact your final grade. So be very thoughtful about um, how much you're using because I don't want to see a ton of it. This speech is about um, your message, your delivery, not about somebody else's. And then um, before I sign off, the last thing I just wanted to go over are speech requirements. Um, you must have at least one visual aid in your informative speech. So be thinking about what you want to do as you're listening to me talk. You can have more. Um, I'm always okay with students utilizing more visual aids, but again, it can't be you can't be using more than one as a crutch, um, as a note card, or as audio or video to fill up the space. Make sure that you're arriving early to make sure everything works. I'm just going to touch on that again. Um, if you're going to the presentation center, try to get there a little bit early so things can get loaded up onto a computer if they need to. Um, this is a particularly important thing to remember if you are utilizing technology. Another thing to remember if you're utilizing technology is to save it in a few locations. Um, if you're using something that's going to be shown on a computer, email it to yourself, email it to me ahead of time if you want to. And make sure that you have it on some, like a flash drive. That way uh, you've got it in a few locations, you know it's going to be available. You do have to submit your visual aid to me with your outline, so uh, be prepared for that. You will need to submit it with your, um, the week of speeches, the week that your outline is due. I'll make sure to remind you of this, but this is something that will need to be submit to me. So whether it's a PowerPoint or you've created a handout, um, I will ask to see those things. Um, if you do use a person or an object, I do not need you to submit them to me though. Um, obviously they will need to be in the video and I will need to see them, um, but I do not need them to come find me. If you have any additional questions about visual aids or if you just want someone to review yours, you know where to find me. Thanks for listening.